Hi folks, in this video I'm going to be creating a lab to demonstrate an ARP poisoning attack or ARP spoofing attack um, and then how we can prevent this through enabling dynamic ARP inspection on a Cisco switch. Just to get started I'm going to go ahead and put a Cisco switch on the board here. I'm just going to name it switch1. I'm going to need a client. This is the client we're going to poison the ARP cache on. And then to do that, we're going to use this Kali Linux virtual machine, which I set up previously. I'm just going to scoot this down just a little bit. Okay, and beyond that, we're just going to need a router. I'll just call it router one R1. And we're just going to wire them up really quick. Okay. There we go. And we just hit the start button. And the Kali Linux box is going to be starting up in the VMware right now, but while I'm here, I'm just going to kind of organize the labeling here. Kind of get a rundown of what we're going to be doing here in just a, just a minute. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is basically just set up the IP addresses on router 1 and switch 1. These are going to be static IP addresses. And then on switch one, we're going to configure a DHCP server that's going to hand out addresses to these two computers. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and set up a DHCP snooping, which is uh, required to set up dynamic ARP inspection. And then we're going to go from there. So just to label this a little bit, the router one interface is just going to be 10.1.1.1. .1 .1. Okay, let me stick it over here. Why not? There you go. And then the... switch interface is going to be 10.1.1.2 but just uh, digging into it we're going to go ahead and start with just router 1 whoops let me close these out okay there we go router 1 okay so for router 1 if we do a show IP in brief we can so, uh, show that all interfaces are currently down so we're going to be configuring E00, so we're going to go configure terminal, int E00 for Ethernet 00, and it's going to be a no shut, and then IP address 10.1.1.1, .1 .1 .1, and then 255, 255, 255, 0, and that's pretty much it for the router as far as what we're going to be doing. So you can now see the interface is, uh, the IP address is assigned and it's up. So that's pretty much all we have to worry about for router 1. Uh, moving on to the switch, there are a few configurations we have to do to get this started. So if I do the same command show IP in brief, I'm going to need to uh, set up the VLAN 1 switch virtual interface. Since it's going to be acting as a DP, uh, DHCP server, it's going to need an IP address. So we're going to go configure terminal, interface, VLAN 1. So it's an SVI, essentially. We're going to go no shut, and then IP address 10.1.1.2 for the switch, and then the same subnet mask. Okay, now if I do that same show IP and brief, we can see now the VLAN 1 has been set up for the switch virtual interface. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and set up a DHCP server. And to do that first, I have to uh, exclude the addresses, which I don't want to be handed out. So we're going to type in IP DHCP excluded address. And the first is going to be 10.1.1.1. .1 so that's router one's address. And then the high IP address, basically the range is going to be 10.1.1.1 through 10.1.1.10. So we're just basically just telling the server don't hand out these addresses. At this point now we can set up the DHCP pool. IP DHCP pool. We're just going to call it DHCP1. Okay. And we're going to type network 10.1.1.0 and a subnet mask. Okay. And we're going to give it the default router, which is going to be router 1's interface. 10.1.1.1. And that's pretty much it as far as setting up the DHCP server. If we do a show run pipe section DHCP, it'll show the commands we previously entered. We're excluding these addresses. We set up the pool and everything looks good. 
And what I'm going to go ahead and do ahead of time here is set up DHCP snooping, which I covered in a previous video. But I'm just going to go ahead and set it up now. Uh, so that way, when we go ahead and set up these uh, requests, the IP addresses for these computers, it's going to go ahead and add the uh, information to the DHCP snooping binding table, which we're going to need later. So I'm just going to do that now. So to do that, we're going to type in IP DHCP snooping. And that enables DHCP snooping. But we also have to enter the command IP DHCP snooping VLAN 1 to enable it on the VLAN. So if we type in show IP DHCP snooping, we can see that it's now enabled. And more importantly, what we really need it for is the binding table. So show IP DHCP snooping binding. Okay. Currently, there aren't any bindings because we have this server hasn't handed out any addresses yet, but we're going to do that in just a second. And this is really the binding table is what we're going to need uh, to make uh, dynamic ARP inspection work. So the next thing we have to do is get some IP addresses on these two computers. So to do this, I'm going to go back to the console. Actually, right click on PC1, hit console. So I can get that opened up. Okay. So I'm going to type in show IP. This will show has no IP address assigned. Whoops. There we go. So to give it a uh, DHCP address for VPCS, it's going to be IP DHCP. And then it's going to send a uh, DHCP packet, discover packet, to the switch. And it's going to respond uh, from the uh, DHCP server back. And it got the 10.1.1.11 address from the DHCP server. I'm actually going to label that ahead of time here. It's going to come in handy later when we do the uh, art poisoning attack. And on PC1, if we want to go ahead and try and ping router 1's interface, we can try that. So we'll go ping 10.1.1.1. And it should get a response. There it goes. Okay, just do a control C. Now we got to set up the Kali Linux box with an IP address. So to do that, we're going to go to the VMware. Looks like it started up properly. So we're going to go, I'm just going to log in with root. Uh, my password, which I've previously set up. I'm going to go terminal. Okay, now we got to have this thing set up a, a DHCP address. Have it handed out from the switch. So to do that, I'm going to type in the command dh client and then dash r. Dash r basically stands for release. And if I do an if config, It'll show that there's no address currently assigned to the uh, Ethernet Zero interface. So we just released the uh, DHCP uh, any address that was on here. So if we type DH, I'm sorry, DH client just on its own, that will uh, send out a new uh, DHCP packet, and we should get a response from the server. So if I type in ifconfig, after typing in that DH client's command, we should have gotten handed out an IP address. As we can see here, it's 10.1.1.13. So while we're here, I'm going to go ahead and label that in packet, uh, not packet tracer, uh, GNS3. 10.1.1.13. Okay, so now we're all set up. If we go to the switch, console, let me expand this. Okay, if we go to the switch console and we type in show. IP DHCP snooping binding. We can see that it's created two entries for PC1 in the Kali box. Uh, and it's collected the MAC address, IP address, and uh, interface number here. And we don't have dynamic ARP inspection enabled now, but when we do enable it, it's going to rely on this table. And it's going to use this information to determine uh, which ARP packets are bad and which are good based on th this, this table here. But at this point, I'd say we're all good to go ahead and get into the ARP poisoning attack this Kali Linux box is going to do. Uh, and basically what's going to happen is it's going to uh, send basically bogus ARP packets to PC1 and Router1, basically lying, stating that uh, to PC1 that... Uh, that Kali, the Kali Linux box, the MAC address is actually the 10.1.1.1 uh, .1 interface on router 1. It's basically going to lie and say, oh yeah, that's 
that's your default gateway so forward the traffic to Kali Linux and it's going to forward it there and if the return traffic it's going to uh, forward it router one its cache is going to tell it to forward it to the Kali Linux box and then back to there so basically the traffic normally would be forwarding in this type of pattern but because of this our poisoning attack it's going to be forwarding like this if that kind of makes sense. So this would effectively just be a man in the middle attack at this point with it enabled, so. Okay, so going to the Kali Linux box. We're gonna start at the art poisoning attack. So the first command we're gonna enter is echo one, the uh, greater than symbol, and then slash proc slash sys slash net slash ipv4 slash ip underscore forward okay and then for the actual command which is going to enable the our po uh, poisoning attack it's going to be arp spoof which for the record if you don't have this command currently on your kali linux box you can actually get it by typing in uh, app get install dsniff dsniff is the package that uh, will contain that uh, arp spoof command so just letting you know ahead of time if you, if you don't have it anyway back to the arp spoof command so arp spoof you're going to type in dash i for interface we're going to specify the interface it's going to be ethernet 0 or f0 then we're going to type in dash t for target and the target is going to be pc1 which has the 10.1.1.11 address. So we're going to type in 10.1.1.11. And to forward the traffic to the router, we're also going to need to po poison the ARP cache uh, of router 1. So the additional part of the command is going to be dash r, which dash r, the description in the manual for the ARP spoof command is poison both host and target to capture traffic in both directions. So effectively dash R you can think of it as just router but that's not exactly what it means according to the manual but the function is just the same. Um, so the router interface is going to be 10.1.1.1 and that's it. And we go ahead and hit enter and we'll see that the ARP poisoning attack is now being initiated Okay, and we'll see on PC of the switch, we can see there aren't any log messages right now because uh, dynamic ARP inspection is not enabled. If it was enabled, you'd see all kinds of log messages occurring right now. Currently, only DHCP snooping is enabled. So if we wanted to right now, we could actually do a, a packet capture uh, using Wireshark on this link here. You would just right click on it and open up Wireshark and any traffic that's being sent or received from PC1 is going to be forwarded uh, through the Kali Linux box first and then forwarded back to the router and then going back through the router back to the PC1. So if you wanted to do a capture you could do that. Um, but at this point just wanted to demonstrate that the R poisoning attack is actually occurring which it is in the, uh, based on the Kali Linux box. But to cancel this out you're just going to hold down control and then C and it might take a few seconds. Just waiting here for a second. There it goes. Okay. So we're going to minimize this for now. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and enable the uh, dynamic ARP inspection so we can stop that ARP poisoning attack from occurring on that Kelly Linux box. So to enable uh, dynamic ARP inspection, the command you're going to want to enter is ip arp inspection vlan1 which will enable it on vlan1 and then from here it's going to be ip arp inspection validate and then we have some options here so we're going to have it validate on the source mac address destination mac address and the ip address so basically what it's going to check it's going to use this dhcp snooping table it's going to verify, like I said, the source MAC, the destination MAC, and the IP address, all of these things. 
Uh, if it doesn't, it's just going to drop the packet if, if any of these things are mismatched. So we're going to do all three. So for the command, IP ARP inspection, validate source MAC, destination MAC, and IP. Enter. Okay. Now, if we exit that and we type in show, show IP ARP inspection. It'll give you some statistics you can look at. Well, we can see up here that all three of the parameters are enabled. So it's going to check the source MAC validation, destination MAC, and IP address. Based on that DHCP snooping table, which, again, we can view by typing in show IP DHCP snooping binding. So this is where it's going to be performing its checks. Okay. And again, if you want to verify that one more time, you can type in show run pipe section ARP, and that'll show the previous commands we've entered right there in the running config. But anyway, getting into this, we're going to go ahead and try the ARP spoofing attack one more time. So going back to the Kali Linux box, you can just hit the up arrow, and that'll bring up the previous command, and we're just going to hit enter again. Okay. Looks like it's running but if we go to the switch we'll notice that we're going to be getting a lot of log messages here we go so we're back on the switch and we can see that it's generating these log messages since DHCP snooping uh, not DHCP snooping a dynamic ARP inspection is enabled so you can see invalid ARP specifies the interface the VLAN number and then it gives the information of the and the MAC address and IP address it's causing the issue so that'll keep generating log messages until we cancel it. But the good thing is, Switch is not going to be forwarding these ARP packets to R1 or PC1. Okay, so at this point we can go ahead and cancel out the ARP spoofing or ARP poisoning attack on the Kali Linux box. So we'll just uh, hold down Control C and that'll stop it here in just a few seconds. Uh, obviously these uh, false ARP packets aren't gonna, uh, having the desired effect because they're being dropped by the switch at this point, so they're not being delivered to their destination. Uh, thus poisoning their ARP tables. That's not happening right now since DAI is enabled. But that pretty much does it for this lab. Uh, if you found this video useful, feel free to like the video, and thank you for watching.